Today we're with Hans Kleisel, the founder of HK Engineering here in Germany. And they are world renowned for restoring Mercedes 300 SLs. So Hans, uh, here we are in this beautiful monastery where the monks used to brew beer and now you've turned it into a facility for restoring literally hundreds of classic gullwing Mercedes sports cars and you've learned so much over the years about these cars that you're an expert and you've even written a book about them. Uh, could you tell us about your own personal car which you drive, it's a gullwing also, and just share with us some of the uh, knowledge you have about this car and maybe tell us why you love it and how it came to be in the first place. Well, it is a very original car and uh, it has a great uh, history. It belonged uh, to the most famous playboy of the 50s, Porfirio Rubirosa. Uh, he knew a lot of people. He had the uh, most beautiful girls at the time. Uh, he was a diplomat, uh, he was a racer. And uh, well, and uh, after all, when I bought the car, in the plate, there were my initials, 300 HK 75. It looked it was like a it was French. for you. Yeah, so I had no choice. French, French plate 75 is Paris, so because he drove the car mostly in Paris. Ah. The car has a very interesting patina. It is not shiny. And I think you have a name for this kind of paint. Well, uh, you have to know that uh, at the time, the cars all had nitro paint. And uh, it was... Uh, paint that was not shiny by itself. You had to polish it every day or every second day to keep it shiny. But uh, if it were cool enough, you didn't polish and so the, the paint had a dull appearance, the same appearance as the car has now. I was the first one to do this you were. with a classic car. Yeah, I yeah, remember because I see when a I lot presented it uh, yeah. at the Millimilia, I think uh, maybe 18 years ago, and everybody said, what is that? But after then, they realized that uh, this is how classic cars should be painted when they are silver. And now uh, all the museums like uh, Mercedes Museum or BMW, they yeah. have their car in, in this, this way. Kind of the interior also is very original, I think. It's um, not very original. It is the original uh, interior. It's the first leather and uh, it can be proved uh, when you see on the downside of, uh, of this cushion, it's maybe hard to see, but here is uh, the number of the body. Right, I that see. That they yes. used to do with every car. So if you see this on a Theranos L car, you know that the seats are original. Are original. And that indicates probably that the rest of the car is original. You know, when, when you have an um, old interior, the first thing that gets ruined uh, is the seats mm -hmm. because you sit on them, you know. Mm -hmm. So if the seats are original, you can uh, you can take, make the conclusion that all the rest is uh, yeah. original as well. Yeah, and many many famous people were in this automobile yes, yes, over time. Course. I mean, yeah, you yeah. think you mentioned Marilyn Monroe as a possibility? Um, yeah. Uh, 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 what were some That's of the other? Sure. For example, Zsa Zsa Gabo. Mm -hmm. She was in Paris uh, with him for a long time, and uh, there's a lot of pictures with her and the car mm -hmm. and him. You have something written here, and I don't assume that's graffiti, right? <laughs> 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 so what is this? No, it, uh, it was Sterling Moss that I uh, met uh, when we did the tour also, I think, in 2001, and he was driving a uh, little MGB, and we were driving this car, so... Uh, he said hello, we talked to him, <laughs> and then I asked him, could you please sign my car? Oh said, my not? God. And this is uh, how so it happened. So you're never going to wax this car? Yeah. No. <laughs> never? <laughs> no, it's, it's a, a paint over it to, yeah. to keep it safe. Yeah. <laughs> a flip-up steering wheel, that's nice. So that was good for ease of entry and exit. Can you tell us more about the other gauges, like the speedometer that Ruby Rosa modified? This is a very special one, because uh, Ruby Rosa he faked it and uh, he changed the numbers so uh, he did as maximum speed 360 instead of 260 <laughs> to impress the woman obviously uh, also this uh, clock here is a instrument that he put in the car as a personal choice it's not the original uh, clock that's in the car the other instruments are 
original. This is for the RPM. This is the oil pressure. This is the fuel gauge. And here you have uh, the temperature of the oil and uh, the temperature of the water. When I want to start the car, here I have the ignition and here I have to do this switch that makes the electrical fuel pump working. And now I can start the car. <laughs> Man, that is big. So this is a 300 engine that was in the big limousine at the time. So Hans, how did they fit this limousine engine into this much smaller sports car? Well, it seems so big, but what you see is the intake manifold. Right, that's here. Engine that they had, that they had in the limousines, did not fit under the hood. Mm -hmm. So they had to incline the engine and this is why you have this appearance with the big uh, intake manifold. To get the air in, uh, coming from there, right. they had to do this big manifold. Yeah, because it sweeps across also, the engine. also uh, mm, has the effect uh, to get more horsepower because of the way how the air gets into the engine. Okay. And as you see, to get it here and there under the hood, they had this, uh, let me just close the hood yeah. to, to see it. I had this uh, thing that looks like a styling element, mm -hmm. but it was necessary uh, to get the engine in. So, so this, and this, this part goes under the hood. You yeah, know? well, this is one of the few designs that's authentically functional. You yes, know, all right, these right. things mean something. Yeah. So they didn't have a carburetor on this. Was this one of the first cars not to have a carburetor? But uh, this was the first big production car that ah. had the uh, direct fuel injection. Yeah. It's not a normal as they have it now. It's a, a so-called direct fuel injection. Gets so directly, directly in here. In the engine block I where uh, the explosions take yeah. place. Okay. Um, and this uh, system of the direct fuel injection mm -hmm. comes uh, from the airplanes. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the engines that Mercedes did for the Messerschmitt airplanes in the World War. Oh. Hans, you were explaining to me that uh, because this car is built on a tubular frame and not a chassis underneath, uh, that the frame forced the engineers to create the gull wing door. And I was just wondering if you could continue explaining that to us. Yeah. You see here that uh, the door opening is very high and it had to be so high because down there is all this kind of tubular frame yes. everywhere this little tubes they are very light so uh, this is what makes this car so special it's this light tubular frame that is derived from the aircraft of world war ii uh, it was a necessity and not a styling element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you see that uh, now you can easily get in and out. And if the door was, was here, how, how could you get in and out of the car? Yeah. Hans, can you explain how the door works, how you open it and close it for us? Okay, you have this handle here to tear it down. And then you get your hand on this handle and just you close it, okay? And to open, it's same thing. The doors are light, uh, they are out of aluminium. And uh, you have uh, here the springs inside that support you when you open the door, so it's quite easy to open it. Uh -huh. This is important for the car, it was a race car, it had to be light. This was a big advantage. So this is why they had to figure out the door opening like this to mm -hmm. get in and out. Hans, we've talked enough about this car. Now let's get this 300 SL out on the road. This car is famous for being so fast in its day. How did it compare to the Maseratis and Ferraris? It was uh, the fastest car uh, of its time. Um, it went 250 kilometers and no other car. Thank you.
52, because in the year of 54. It was only 50, late 57, 58, when the Ferraris were first up. But until 57, there was no other car could match this one uh, in terms of uh, speed and velocity. So, Hans, you were telling me earlier that Sterling Moss won the 1955 Mille Miglia with a 300 SLR Sport Racer, uh, which was not really a production car. It was designed for racing. Uh, but there were cars literally bought off the showroom floor in that race called production class automobiles, and they came in with winning times too. Can you explain a little bit more about that to us? I think that the biggest uh, um, success of this car was the Mille Miglia of 55. Everybody knows that Sterling Moss won the race car, but nobody knows that in the first 10 cars out of 400 participating were three normal standard Galvins. Number five was the first Galvin of John Fitch. And in the Mille Miglia of 56, this was even more uh, incredible, uh, it was Graf Berger von Trips, who was many hours in the lead of the whole race with a standard Galvin. So all he had done is ordered the transaxle to his specification and he took this car yeah. almost out of the showroom and took yeah, it into yeah. the race course. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Is, or another story, it was Eiffel Rennen at the Nürburgring mm -hmm. in 57. One gentleman driver bought standard 300 SL car and he won. He was the overall winner of the race. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> These cars were, at the time, incredibly fast. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's good stuff. Hans, you know, something I really like about this is you're driving the car with the door open. I never even expected that you could do that with this, um, but it really makes it feel open, like, a, like being in a cabriolet. Can you tell me a little bit about that? You can keep the doors open. And uh, it's, in fact, as uh, you would drive in uh, an open car. And that makes you feel like you're outside? And yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. People mostly think you open the doors because you want to show people how nice the car is, but it's just because it's hot inside. And when you open the doors, uh, it, it, it's very, very nice. And you have the air coming in and you're driving like uh, in a cabriolet. So, Hans, as they say, uh, all good things come to an end. Um, I just wanted to say that it's been great. Um, I think I can speak for the viewers of Carthropology that we really appreciate your sharing your time and knowledge on this remarkable car and explaining the history, the engineering, uh, the races, and its place in high society. Um, and then taking us out in this beautiful countryside it's been absolutely great, just great. Thanks so much. You're welcome.